In the past couple videos, we've learned how to create charts with LibreOffice Calc. We've learned how to sort values, how to create pivot tables. But sometimes you just need a little bit more. You've got to get those hands dirty, get under the hood, and do some basic statistics. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do just that. Hey everyone and welcome back. This is the Part-Time Economist and thank you for once again joining me in my quest to make you a spreadsheet superstar. Specifically in today's video, we are talking about basic statistics with LibreOffice Calc. Now, if you are not a math person, do not run away because LibreOffice Calc makes this super easy and I'm going to show you a layman's perspective of how to interpret these statistics and what they actually mean. So if you're doing a research project, a presentation, and you have no idea where to start adding statistics, this video might be helpful. Now just to go back and kind of set the stage, in this video series we are essentially pretending that you are a regional manager of a bunch of different supermarkets and you've got all of these different stores, all of these different managers that work underneath you, and we're trying to figure out what is going on with our profits here? Why are we not making the money that we want to make? And we've done a variety of different things, but we just need to do some statistics. There's no other way around it. So thankfully, LibreOffice Calc makes this exceptionally easy. All we have to do is select the data that we want to work with. In this case, we're looking at the expenses category. And why are we choosing expenses over profit? Well, number one, for the purposes of this video, it doesn't matter because numbers are numbers. The statistics and process is going to be the same. But if you're looking at this more from a business perspective, expenses are something that helps determine profit, right? It's how much each store is spending. So we're trying to see as a manager, how are the stores doing with their expenses? Is one kind of just being wasteful and blowing through money? Or are they all pretty much minimizing their expenses, cutting costs, so to speak? So with that being said, let's go ahead and go to the data category. Let's go to statistics. And you can see there's a lot of cool statistics support here. We're going to go with basic descriptive statistics. It's going to ask us where we want to output this data. So we'll simply click there and we're going to go ahead and click OK. And you will see it gives us in less than a second or two some numbers. What do these numbers mean? That's what we're going to find out. So when we look at basic statistics, I like to think of them in two broad categories. First off, we have what's known as measures of central tendency. That's what is our baseline? What's our number in the middle? What is our average? And from a business perspective, that could be very useful because we're trying to see where are we? What's our average sales? What is our average expense? What's kind of our baseline? Then we have measures of variability, right? These are things like the range, like the standard deviation. With this, we're saying how far away from the average is each store, right? Are all of our stores kind of on the same page? They're doing the same thing. They're following the same process. Or are they just all over the place, right? So depending on what the data tells us, as a manager, that determines what we're going to do. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the measures of central tendency. That is the mean, the median, and the mode. Now, the mean is what most people think of if you were to tell them the average, right? Because the average is simply we take all of our different stores, we add them up, and we divide by however many we have. And you can see that LibreOffice Calc did this in about two seconds. If you were doing this yourself, you would have to add up 17 different stores, hoping you don't press the wrong button on your calculator, and then divide by the number of stores. Obviously, if you're talking about 10,000 stores, it gets even more complicated. So the mean in this example is about $234. So on average, each store is expending about $234. However, the average or mean isn't a perfect measure of central tendency because it is subject to extreme values. So let me give you an example. If you have one store that sells $5, then another one that does 6, 7, 8, 5, 6. If you have all of those, your average is probably going to be somewhere around 5 or 6. But then let's suppose there's one store that does $1,000 of sales. Well, your average is going to be hundreds of dollars because that one extreme value outweighs all of those smaller values, even though your average store 
doesn't even come close to getting to double digit sales. So a different way of looking at the number in the middle is something known as the median. And the median basically tells us if we took all of the different stores from smallest to biggest, we put them in a line, what's the number in the middle? We're not adding them, we're not dividing them, we're just saying what's the number in the middle. So if we go back to the previous example, you've got a store that sells $5, $6, $8, $9, and $1,000. Well, the number in the middle is going to be $8, which is a better approximation of the true average because it's not getting skewed by that one extreme value. You see this a lot when we're talking about income, stuff like that, right? The the 1% and everything, they skew the average higher than the median in some cases. So last thing is the mode. Now the mode is the value that occurs most frequently. This is especially important if we're talking about categorical variables, right? So if we're asking people, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream, right? what even is the average flavor of ice cream, right? If we have 10 people that say they like chocolate, five that like vanilla, are we gonna do, well, the average flavor is 0.25 chocolate, right? No, that doesn't make sense. So the mode is simply the value that occurs most frequently. In this case, let's suppose it was chocolate. So that is the measures of central tendency. That's kind of our baseline. But we also wanna know as a manager, where are the other stores? Are they close in line or are they all over the place? And that's where measures of variability come into play. The first and probably easiest of these to understand is the range. In this example, our range of expenses is $550. So if we took the highest store subtracted by the lowest, there would be a $550 difference. Now, that doesn't really tell us a whole lot because maybe one store is bigger, maybe one's in a different area of town. Again, there's a lot that you have to think about as a manager, but that's the interpretation of the statistic. One thing that is kind of in my opinion, one of the most fundamental concepts in all of statistics is the standard deviation. The standard deviation tells us on average how far off is each store from, well, not each store, right? Because we're thinking statistics big picture. But in our example, it's telling us how far off is each store from the mean, right? So if we took the average store, how far away from the mean it is, and we can see here, that our standard deviation is $159. So on average, a store is gonna be about $160 away from that $234 value. Now, here's where things get interesting. As a manager, especially if we're talking about quality control, process improvement, we want a very, very small standard deviation because that means we are following the process, we are predictable, we know what to expect every single time. The bigger that standard deviation gets, it tells us there's a huge amount of variability here. And in some cases, that's gonna be inevitable, right? Some stores are bigger, some stores are smaller, but this is great because it tells us on average how far off is a certain store from the average. So you can see there's a couple other statistics here. The minimum, obviously, the maximum, that's the smallest value and the biggest value respectively. We have the count, which is just the number of points in our data set. The sum, again, it just adds everything up. You do see some more advanced things like kurtosis as well as skewness. Uh, skewness just refers to whether the distribution is kind of shifted left, shifted right. And then of course, kurtosis refers to the tails of the distribution. Not really important if you're just doing very, very basic statistics. The, they are important, but not for kind of our introductory level purposes. Third quartile, first quartile, again, important statistics, but not for the level that we're currently at. We might get more into them in a later video. So we have these basic statistics. One thing that I wanna show you that I think you will find very interesting is what does this actually mean? How can we depict this graphically? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make a chart that shows for each store how far off is each store from the average, right? And this is important because we know that there's gonna be a little bit of variability, right? We know some stores are gonna be above the mean, some are gonna be below, but if we see one that's just way off in left field, we're gonna to wanna to sit down with that manager and say, hey, 
what's going on here, right? So how can we depict that graphically? Well, we're going to kind of get to put together a couple different skills. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to click on a column. Again, it doesn't matter which one. We're going to then right click and we will insert a column before. So we've got expenses, we've got profit, and let's go here with average. And all we're going to do for the average is we are going to find our average expense. So in this example, we are $234.06. We are going to copy and we are going to paste that into our cell. And all we're going to do from here is we're going to go to the very bottom of this cell. We're going to wait till we get our crosshair icon. And we're going to go ahead and drag and drop this all the way down. So we have got the profit. We've got the average. And what we want to do from here is we want to create one more column and this is going to be for the departure is what we're going to call it. So let's go ahead and let's make one more column, insert column before. We're going to do departure and our departure is simply going to be a formula where we're going to do the equal sign and we're going to take the expenses. We're going to then go ahead and subtract by the average. So this store is $184 below the average expense. We're going to simply drag and drop this and for each store it's going to tell us how far above or below is each store from the average. But we can do more with this. We want to see each store plotted on a chart. So since we want to depict this graphically all we're going to do we are going to go ahead and select the departure field and we also want to select the store so we are going to hold down on the control button on your computer and basically what that does is it allows us to select different columns without losing our previous selection. All right, we've got both of these selected. We're going to come up to the top. We are going to go ahead and insert a chart. Once that chart wizard loads, what we want to do is a simple line chart. Actually, let's do a let's do a different chart here. Let's go with a column chart. Okay, let's go ahead and again, I showed you in the previous video how to add the titles, everything like that. We don't really need that here because we're just going to get a quick graphical representation, but this just instantly shows us which stores were higher than normal expenses, which stores were below normal expenses. So we can look right here. We see most of our stores are kind of within the average. And then we see store 16 is absolutely skyrocketing in terms of expenses. So just a cool way of looking at the data. You could do a lot of different things. You could group the stores by standard deviation, right? So not just dollar value, but how many standard deviations away from the mean. So many different things that you could do. Again, this is just an introductory video. We're just going over the very, very basic descriptive statistics. In future videos, we'll talk a lot more about the cool statistical tests if you're getting into some of the more advanced stuff. But as always, I do hope you found the video useful. I do appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.